So if I told you we were gonna build a big shade structure for a park, what would come to mind? A uh, big canvas awning, maybe a pergola. Yeah, nothing to really make an interesting project, right? No, everyday stuff. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you would be wrong, my friend, because we're about to build this crazy shade structure that I've never seen before. Matter of fact, I don't know if anybody's seen something like this before. Let's check it out. So a lot of times we get projects into the shop where someone will send us drawings and we look at them and it's pretty obvious exactly what's going on. Then there's other times that we get certain things sent over and we're super excited about them at first and then once we get the job we kind of go, okay now how the hell do we actually build this? One of those is this UFO looking structure and it's 20 feet in diameter and 20 feet tall and it's kind of a geometric craziness to be able to build it and put it all together so we're going to have to do some figuring out on math and try to see what we're going to do to make this thing happen. I don't know, this, this has actually gone pretty fast. Once I got everything laid out and remembered, you know, my high school geometry. So the way I laid out the, the three sections for the smaller ring, so I started just laying it all out off the middle. Laid out what I wanted, uh, you know, where the one by six on the inside is, and then segmented all that out at 120 degrees, and then at 30 degrees, and then just physically laid out all the marks so that I could get the measurements and have reference points to get the bigger pieces of one by six on here, mark them on the inside and the outside so I had the right angle, and then take them over to the saw and cut just that piece times three, the outer piece times three, and then all the framing pieces. It's a challenge because it's really big, it's really heavy, and it's a interesting design. So when we first saw this project, a lot of people kind of thought it looked like something that would have either come out of the World's Fair or the Space Needle or even Men in Black. I think this is what the Mayans actually based their calendar on, to be completely honest with you. It's gonna come down to a lot of really meticulous fabrication by Rob. I'm not sure why, but when it went to engineering, they came back and said it needs to be engineered to support the weight of a person should somebody ever climb up onto it. I'm not sure who will ever attempt to climb onto it, but I mean, I've been young and drunk before, so I guess I could see how it happens. The biggest thing that we really were concerned with was all the angles going into these circles and how we were gonna make this attach and actually be structural, which the original plans had it called for like a six inch by one inch, but they were hollow tubes that we could bend and throughout the process, they ended up changing it and wanting this to be load bearing. So we had to change it to solid aluminum that's one inch thick. So now we're dealing with an extra 4,000 pounds worth of weight, basically, that we've got to try and support. Yeah, Robert is definitely not happy about this one. So now the entire outside frame and all the seams and all the insides is solid one by six aluminum. Stuff weighs like 20, 27 pounds a foot. I can barely get it off the sawhorse. And this is how high in the air? This is the first tier. This is 11 foot um, off the ground. And then this is the small one. The next one up is 19 feet across. So the second layer is 10 foot wider than this. And you're going to be able to build that in here? I don't know. I figured I'd start with the little one and kind of get my, you know, feet wet on building this one and then I have the big one already laid out. That's why there's paper all over the floor because I didn't have anything big enough to lay it out on. So I put paper all down on the floor, drilled a hole in the concrete and put a bolt in it and then marked out all my radiuses and, you know, segmented the circle and all that stuff. So that's already laid out. It's going to be big. So now that I got the small one built and out of my face, I can start building the big one, the big ring for the top, which is gonna be interesting because a third of it takes up all that space and then another one and then another one takes up my entire work station. The biggest concern right now is we've built some pretty large signs in here, but we've had to kind of do them in segments. This one has to be all fully put together as a 20 foot diameter 
and we're kind of running out of room because we also have other projects going on. So we're trying to figure out what we're going to move around in order to make this thing fit in the shop. To do this project in the old shop, I would have had to move like three people out of my way to have the space to lay this all out because you can work on small part, you know, part of it, but at some point you have to put the entire thing together to drill all the holes, to line everything up, you know, to even finish the welds. Right now uh, they're drilling the holes and doing some sanding. This comes apart into three pieces. So next step is to take this thing apart, cut the perforated panels and get them all attached. Um, and then this thing can go to paint. So on top of the, the two rings is gonna be this 50-50 uh, perforated aluminum so don't you know it's 50% shade coverage so that'll get cut out to the inside of that those three frame pieces and then they'll drop in it's lighter than regular aluminum because it's missing 50% so the original plan was that we were going to put this entire structure together either inside the shop or in the parking lot but as we've Put it all together and realized how large it was and the scale and weight of everything now we're realizing that we're probably going to have to just do this in the field and run with it now that i'm at this point the attachment points need to be welded on the way this works with the three poles is the pole has a what's called a knife plate welded to it this will have a double plate welded to it that's drilled to line up so when this thing gets installed the poles will be set one of these will be taken up with the crane and slid into the knife plate and bolted. And then the next one will be brought up onto the pole. They will, they'll get bolted together, bolted to the pole, and then the crane will hold both of those. And then the third piece will come in. Because until all three pieces are there and they're all bolted together, it's not self-supporting. It's all a big geometry mess because we have to figure out what all of those angles are. And of course, there's not a single straight line within it because it's all a curve. So we have to figure all of that math out. So the next step, now that I have the big ring for the shade structure done, my next step is to start getting into the steel. Right now I'm cutting uh, the base plates for the shade structure. So the pole will come down, get welded to these, because it gets bolted to the concrete. When I'm cutting thicker metal, especially if I'm doing holes, so I gotta cut just outside that line. So I'll drill a hole so that I don't have to sit here with the torch and heat it up and then punch a hole and then start moving. So I'll drill a hole, that way I can just get the torch right in. It heats up almost instantly. I come out from the center to the outside and then do my hole. All that metal I was cutting earlier, this is one of the legs for the circular shade structure. This is where I could screw up everything. But seriously, this is where I could f up everything. What could go wrong? Uh, the what could go wrong question is pretty much everything. Cause there's a lot of different angles and a lot of different things that we have to work with. And if one thing at the bottom is an eighth of an inch off, by the time we get up here, you're three or four inches off, then it's just not gonna work. The whole thing starts at this this plate. This is 15 degrees. So this angle has to be perfect to set up those angles that have to be perfect to set up that knife plate that also has to be perfect. Where could it go south? Where could it go south? It all goes south going through the center ring. It's either not gonna make it through the center ring or this pole will run into the other two poles. Because there's from corner of pole to corner of pole to corner of pole, there's an eighth inch on paper, there's an eighth of an inch of clearance. So like if that weld is too big, it doesn't fit. If both the welds together are too big, it doesn't fit. There is no room for air in the middle. When will you know if it's gonna fit? When we put it up. Not before then? No. When you say put it up, you mean at the install? At the install. How scary is that? I, I'm not an installer. I'll be sitting right here. I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm off that day. 
Man, I was really excited about getting this thing done, painted, installed out in the field, you know, making it all happen. But now after hearing Robert talk about this thing, man, I don't feel real good about it. Yeah, well, we're definitely gonna have to mock it up or dry fit it somehow here in the shop or out in the parking lot. So we don't want to get out to the job site with rental equipment and five guys and have to put it back on yeah. the trailer to bring it back. No, no, definitely not. And like we always say, expect the unexpected, but plan so there is no unexpected. Now we just gotta figure out what that plan is. Did we really say that? That sounded really good. I think I just made it up. Well, let's say it from now on. Let's do it.